Hey guys, I saw Bear here, and today I'll be talking about the update 0.029 for the game Foxhole. So there's been a lot of new defensive and offensive upgrades with this latest update. Let's start ourselves off with the defensive. So new on the defensive side of things is the latest buildable structure, the bunker. The bunker is an addition to the pre-existing wall system. So before, it used to be that you could start off building a chain link fence, then a reinforced wall, and then a fortress wall. Well now, there's been a fourth tier put onto that system, and that is the bunker. On top of all the other basic and refined materials you will have spent building the other walls, the bunker is an additional 120 refined materials on top of that. In order to build a bunker, they must be adjacent to two other fortress walls. Once constructed, the end result is a pillbox on a concrete tower that dominates the landscape, is extremely hard to take down, and has a slot for a player to sit inside of, for all you wannabe snipers out there. The basic pillboxes have also seen a bit of a buff. Their basic material cost has been reduced from 150 basic materials down to 125. Town hall health has also been increased by 20%. They'll still go down in about 3 satchel charges, but they'll be a lot more resistant to mortars and RPGs. Foxholes have also seen an upgrade. Their mitigation against small ballistics has increased by 60%. More on that in a little bit. So on the offensive side, we've got a new mechanic to work with. This mechanic requires a lot of strategy, but it's now going to be the primary way you take out foxholes, pillboxes, and bunkers. The new mechanic is suppression. Now suppression in foxhole functions like some other games you might have played in the last couple of years. Essentially suppression is a way for players with rifles and small arms to reduce the rate of fire from stationary structures such as foxholes, pillboxes, and bunkers. The exception to this is garrison houses. Garrison houses are not affected by suppression at this point. So how it works is, some players can lay down a base of fire. The more fire they pour onto a structure, the more it's suppressed. You'll get the maximum amount of suppression from certain weapons such as SMGs and HMGs. Now while these small ballistics won't have too much of an effect on the structure's health, it will give an opportunity for one soldier to move forward and use his latest weapon, the high explosive grenade. So previously, we only had the regular grenade available to us to attack foxholes and infantry alike. Now the grenades have been divvied up into two categories. You've got your fragmentation grenade, which is good for attacking infantry, and you've got your high explosive grenade, which is good for vehicles and structures. So the frag grenade has had its blast radius increased by 30%. However, its explosion is less likely to kill players now and more likely to put them into a wounded state. The high explosive grenade is good for attacking structures and armor alike. The downside is, though, that the throwing arc is a lot less than the standard grenade. So that's where the suppression mechanic comes in. You'll have to work with your team to attack structures from now on. A pack of 20 HE grenades will cost you 140 basic materials at the weapons factory. Of course, the other option for attacking structures is using the mortar. However, they have seen a bit of a rebalance, and you won't be able to one-man mortar team on an entire defensive system anymore. From now on, the mortars now function like the rest of the artillery in the game. Your camera will be fixed to your character. You will be given the current range on the mortar, and you will be given an azimuth for your direction. Using this, you'll have to coordinate with a player with a set of binoculars in order to lay down fire on structures and defensive systems. To compensate for this, mortar accuracy has been increased by 50%, and binoculars now also show azimuth readings when you're aiming down sights with them. So mortars can still be as effective, if not more effective, but now they just require a level of teamwork that before they didn't. An additional balance to mortars is that mortar shell encumbrance values have been increased by 100%. Some other changes include sticky bomb damage has been increased by 15%, the chance to yield technology parts from gathering components has been increased by 33%. Heavy machine gun accuracy has been increased by 5%, and its range has been increased by 7%. Starter towns are now stockpiled with 30 high explosive grenades and 10 smoke grenades. 
the XP earned from ordering items has been slightly reduced for all items. Some World Conquest and UI changes include that World Conquest screens now show the number of players per faction in each individual region. All bridges and garrison houses will be built in your faction's home region at the start of a war, and barrack spawn points are now cleared when leaving a region or a server. Enemy players can now be muted, band time text formatting is now more readable, the respawn button in the death screen now reads spawn at border if the player is in an enemy overrun region. Tech parts can now be stockpiled in the town hall. There were some other bug fixes along with this update, but I'll save that for the patch notes down below. Thanks for tuning in to this update. If you like this video, like and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest Foxhole updates. And as always, good luck, keep your heads down, and stay in your foxholes. Bear out. <laughs> what are you talking about, Don't you know, Don't you know?